Um, all right, so looking at this problem, if we're trying to integrate x times the square root of 2x minus 1, our first instinct should be, okay, so what's under the square root is its derivative outside the square root, and it's not. The derivative of what's under the square root is 2, but we've got outside the square root is x. So here's what we're going to do. We're still going to start the process of u substitution. Okay, we're going to say that our u is the expression that is under the square root, 2x minus 1. So du over dx is 2. Okay, we do not have a 2 outside of that square root, so we need to... Oh, good, good, good. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, we want to move that 2 to the other side, so that's 1 half du is equal to dx. So that's going to replace that part of the integration. This right here is our u, but we still don't have anything to take care of that x. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our u is equal to 2x minus 1, I'm going to solve that expression equation right there for x so that we can substitute for it so that our variables agree. So we add the 1, and then we divide the whole thing by 2, or I think it's easier to look at that as multiplying it by 1 half. Because that's going to make life a little bit easier here in a second. Okay? So that is what's going to replace our x. Now, we have something now to replace every part of this expression, and it's in terms of u instead of x. So let's do that substitution. So for that x in front, we're going to replace it with 1 half times u plus 1. Well, constants, it's nice if they're multiplying to put that in the front so that we don't have to deal with it. Okay, so that replaces our x. The square root, we need to go ahead and express as the one-half power, and that's u to the one-half power. And dx is equal to one-half du. So we have another one-half here that I'm going to put in the front, and we've got du at the end. Okay, so lots of details here, but the key is We've got to replace every part of this original integral so that it's in terms of u and we are done. All right, now we've got something we can integrate that. Okay, we can integrate that, but first we do need to distribute. Okay, we can't integrate the product, we need to distribute that one half. So we have one fourth times the integral of u times u to the one half is u to the three halves. And u to the 1 half times 1 is u to the 1 half. Now, if we integrate that with respect to u, we get um, add 1 to the exponent. 3 halves plus 1 is 5 halves. Divide by the new exponent, so that flips and becomes 2 fifths. Plus, same thing happens with this one. Add 1, we get 3 halves. Divide by the new exponent, so that fraction flips and it becomes the two-thirds. Don't forget your plus c on the end. Now, chances are they're going to factor this to simplify it a little bit, and then we'll plug the u back in at the very end. So let's look at what we have in common um, inside of my brackets there. Both of them have a 2, so we can factor out that 2. Um, we'll leave, let's leave the, the, the over 5 and over 3 for right now. But they also both have a u. One's to the 5 halves, one is to the 3 halves. So ignore the fractions for a second. If that was just u to the 5th and u cubed, what could we factor out of? u cubed. Well, u to the 5 halves, u to the 3 halves, we can take out u to the 3 halves. Okay, so let's do that. We got the 1 fourth in front. We're also going to take out the 2. 
and we're going to take out the u to the three halves. So what are we left with? We're left with one fifth u. When we the, when we uh, factor out a GCF, it's like dividing by that. When we divide with exponents, we subtract. So five halves minus three halves is two half uh, two halves, which is one. Right. So that's just u the first, and then we've got one third, and we took out the u to the one third. So let's see here. One fourth times two is one half. Let's go ahead and plug our u back in. U was two x minus one. They may simplify what's in parentheses there. They may just go get the one fifth and add those fractions. I don't know. They may also do this. Okay. They might also. Um, let's see here. Factor out um, the one fifth and the one third. And if you do that. Um, it's like, hang on, I gotta wrap my mind around it for a second. I'm just like, I think, no. 115. Okay, they may also take out 115, which I know is really weird. Okay, but hang with me for a second. If we take out 115, that would leave us with. Three, okay, because it's one fifteenth times what gives us one fifth, and that would be three. One fifteenth times what gives us one third, and that would be five. I don't know whether they would go this far or not, but technically, I'm just trying to do all the factoring that you could possibly do. So that would give us 6x uh, minus 3 plus 5. So negative 3 plus 5 is plus 2. Oh, and guess what? We can take out a 2. Do what? Okay, the good thing about a free response question is you do not have to simplify. On a free response question, you could be done right here. Once you got rid of the use. You're done. You don't have to simplify. Well, this is my, I've honestly never seen, I've definitely never seen a use substitution problem this involved on a free response. And really, I, I, I haven't seen the need for use substitution that much on a free response question. The free response questions are much more focused on the application. So they don't give you very difficult functions that you have to deal with because they just want to see do you understand the application side of things, not the uh, computation side of things. That's what the multiple choice part is for. And that's why I'm showing you all this factoring. Um, because you could probably do the use substitution and get to the point where I asked where I started it, but they're probably going to simplify it. Um, so actually Uh, I believe that that is the fully simplified version of this integral. As long as I did all my calculations correctly, that should be right. And if they were to have one of these on multiple choice, that's what it would look like. Honestly, they would simplify it completely and fully. Now, based on my workshop this summer, they said that they're trying, they're kind of getting away from the problems that involve a lot of algebraic simplification um, because they really are trying to test the calculus side of things, not just how well can you do algebra. 
but we still saw some problems that were pretty heavy, heavy on the algebra. So anyways, I just want to be able to say that I've shown you this problem, but you understand how to do it. Um, well, I've just shown you one, so I'm going to do another one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, what, okay. So, when we set up our use substitution, when we say u squared times y, the derivative of that is 2. We're used to, when we do our u substitution, that the derivative goes up elsewhere in the problem. Okay? Or else there's only a constant left in the problem. But we still have a variable there. So, our way to handle that is to say, well, I can very easily solve this part right here for that variable that's still in my problem. So I solve this for x so that it's in terms of u, so now my entire problem is in terms of u, and then it becomes something that I can integrate using my power rule. I can integrate this with an x and a u still there. So let's look at another one like this, because it, I, I know, they're difficult, okay? They are difficult. Um, here is, and let's write, when you write this on your paper, write it like this, 2x plus 1 over the square root of x plus 4. Okay, 2x plus 1 over the square root of x plus 4. So similar to what we just looked at, our u is going to be what is under the square root, x plus 4. So du over dx is 1. So that means du is equal to dx. So this is my u. dx is equal to du. Uh, but I don't have anything to do with that 2x plus 1 yet. So I'm going to take my u. I'm going to solve it for x. In this case, it's very simple. u minus 4 is equal to x. So now I can substitute for that x right there and it's okay if there's more stuff with it but the big thing is I got to get rid of the x. Everything has got to be in terms of u instead of x. All right so let's do our substitution. On the top we've got 2 times x is being replaced with u minus 4 plus 1 over our denominator is u to the one half, and dx is being replaced with du. Square root. Square root to the one half power. And we let what's under the square root be our u. Okay, now we still can't integrate this yet because we don't have a quotient rule for integrals. We don't have product rule, we don't have a quotient rule. Really, truly, the only thing besides the ones that we memorized, like the trig ones and the exponential ones, the only rule that we have is a power rule. So every, every integral that you try to solve has got to be in power rule form. This is not in power rule form right now. So uh, the one half that denominator, we can move that to the numerator, u to the negative one half. And we want to simplify it to the numerator. So we've got to distribute the two, two u. Uh, that's minus 8 plus 1, so that's minus 7. Just like we did with the last problem, we want to distribute that u to the negative 1 half. So we've got 2u, when we multiply u to the negative 1 half by u, we add the exponent, so negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half. And we multiply it by 7, so it's just 7u to the negative 1 half. Now we're finally to the point where we can integrate. So, 2u to the 1 half. Okay, keep the 2, add 1 to the exponent, that becomes the 3 halves, flip it, and multiply, that's the 2 thirds. Minus 7 
add one, that becomes the one half. Divide by the new exponent, it's a fraction, so we put